Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be reviewing this awesome looking Tor 002 thermal camera from Thermal Master, which have kindly sent in this unit for the purpose of the review. I think the naming is awesome and not just that, this is an awesome piece of gear because of its specs and we'll get a chance to go through the details in a few minutes, but I just wanted to take a moment to appreciate how professional this thing looks uh, together with its hard carry case. So imagine you do some kind of professional work and you pull this thing out in front of a, in front of a customer, just from the looks of it, they'll get a feeling you mean serious business. At least that's the impression it gives me after handling a bunch of these thermal cameras in the past years. The camera comes delivered inside this hard shell carry case and inside you'll get some uh, documentation which is useful to extend your warranty up to three years. Uh, you'll also get a uh, calibration certificate with the actual serial number of the camera and a quick start guide. The camera is very well protected inside the foam padding and you'll also get a USB Type-C cable to USB Type-A. Those with a keen eye uh, might have already noticed there is an empty slot over here. This is where the optional extra macro lens would go. Unfortunately, at the time when they sent this camera in for review, which was about two months ago, they didn't have the macro lens available, so they could not include it. And looking at their website today, they still don't appear to offer the macro lens for the Tor 002, but there is another model, Tor 001, uh, which seems to have the macro lens included, so they may have decided to split the offer into two models and only include the macro lens with one of them. And looking at the comparison sheet between the two models, it seems like the Tor 001 adds a bit more features in software and is a little more expensive, uh, but it includes that macro lens. I'll include the link to their website and to Amazon in the description below. It just became available uh, for ordering beginning of July and there might be additional deals available for Prime Day between the 8th and 11th of July on Amazon. There's also a 5% discount code which they provided for my viewers. It will be placed in the description below. So uh, I would say don't delay. Uh, I think that uh, the coupon code will only be available for these uh, three days. Currently it sells for $2.99 on their own website. Uh, it says free shipping, but with that 5% discount, you can get it down to $2.84, which honestly is a must buy. And I'm not exaggerating. This is an excellent deal as I will show in a moment when we get into the actual specs and review of the unit. The camera does feel massive uh, in your hand, but in a good way, as in giving you the impression is gonna do a lot for you. Weight is, 700 grams which is not light but is it is well distributed in this ergonomic shape so i don't see that as a problem given the overall physical dimensions at the top of the camera we have this uh, rubber flap uh, hiding the usb type c port which is used for charging the internal 5000 milliamp hour battery which gives this camera an expected eight hour runtime and four hour charge time and the micro SD card slot, which comes pre-populated with a 32 gigabyte Kioxia uh, memory card. And at the bottom of the handle, uh, we have a tripod mount and a lanyard attachment point, all in this metal part, which is very nice attention to detail and will extend the lifetime of the camera. The feedback on the uh, trigger switch we have here it has that very nice, smooth, clicky action, feels super high quality. This right here is a physical protective shutter for the IR camera lens. I've been wanting this type of feature on a thermal camera since forever because this way I don't have to worry about dust getting on that lens or accidentally scratching it and I also don't have to worry about a cover that I might lose over time. Below the IR, uh, sensor lens we notice the visible camera lens and up here we have a white LED flashlight and a laser pointer for target illumination and notice how all of these are recessed inside this area so it is well protected in case of a drop same as with the LCD screen it is recessed because the camera does come with a 2 meter drop rating and IP54 protection boot time is something like 10 to 15 seconds, which is not the best we've seen. For example, the Guide E2 Plus does boot a little faster, something like five seconds. 
Uh, by the way, I also have a review of this guide E2 Plus published if you're interested in that. But even at 10-15 seconds, given the feature set of this camera, that's certainly not, not slow and I'm not bothered by that. The LCD is a 3.5 inch IPS panel with 640 by 480 pixel resolution. The thermal sensor base resolution is the usual 256 by 192 pixels, so uh, it's probably sporting the same IR sensor from Infiray as all of the other cam cameras we've reviewed, or maybe it's just a new revision of that, but this particular model also includes the modern super IR resolution algorithm, which is running on the internal processor to effectively boost the IR camera resolution up to 512 by 384 pixels, giving you more details in image. Here are two images captured from the same height over the same subject, uh, which is an actively running uh, processor on a PCB, and we can clearly see more details on the image where we have super resolution feature active. Here is also another example where we compared the tower Tor 002 with the E2 Plus, both looking at the same subject, both having the super resolution feature active. This camera has a bunch of temperature measurement functions available. It can do center spot, min, max, auto tracking, six custom spots. Uh, it can show temperature difference, all with plus or minus two degrees Celsius accuracy, guaranteed by, by that calibration certificate, which uh, by itself, it's a fairly standard figure. However, for this model, you also get an actual calibration certificate. The measurement range is minus 20 up to 550 degrees Celsius, and it does have the usual two ranges, which you can select from the settings menu. However, there is now a new auto mode. So if I'm, for example, measuring the image, which has a smaller range, but then I introduce something like a 400 degrees Celsius soldering iron in the image, I would expect it to automatically switch to the higher range. But unfortunately, it does not seem to work that way. I have tried keeping the soldering iron in the frame uh, for longer and closer to the sensor, but nothing switches automatically. And I discovered that in order to get it to trigger that, I have to bring in something bigger like a hot plate because the detection algorithm just seeks for a larger area of the sensor to be at higher temperature for it to perform the switch. So in theory, this can be useful, but in practice, it would have been nice to let the user choose the threshold at which the switch happens. I think the reason why they set this higher threshold uh, number of pixels is to avoid constant switching between the two ranges if you just have some, uh, you know, some measurements on a few pixels jumping around. Another thing that I've noticed is that sometimes the image does contain noise artifacts and it's not just in the super resolution mode, also in standard, like take for example these images where I have the shutter uh, closed on the camera. You can clearly see about the 3 degrees Celsius gradient on the image, uh, but I'm not concerned about that because that's present on all of the cameras that I previously tested. It just shows up more on this particular unit because it has a bigger screen, which uh, a higher quality with higher resolution screen, which shows up better. Uh, but it's the vertical lines uh, that sometimes show up on screen as noise artifacts. It also seems like this camera that does the internal shutter calibration less often, so maybe some softer tweaks would be able to uh, better compensate for that. But again, keep in mind that because of the higher resolution, higher quality screen on this camera, these artifacts will show up uh, more obvious on this, even though they might just as well be present on a different model. In terms of uh, image modes, it can do the usual just IR, just visual, it can do picture in picture, uh, or fusion and the visual camera is 2 megapixels resolution here is the fusion view and while in fusion mode you can adjust the transparency with the left and right keys to your desired level I think the fusion mode works really well on this probably the best I've seen so far out of these thermal cameras coming from China however one important limitation when using fusion mode is that you cannot enable the super resolution feature it probably is a CPU resource thing where if you allocated the resource to doing the fusion, it can't do the super resolution algorithm in real time anymore. It also has this mode where you can do fusion alignment uh, so that if you place the camera on a tripod, you can perfectly align the fusion algorithm using this mode. It also supports a comprehensive uh, list of uh, color palettes, as we can see here. 
Uh, so you can select the one you prefer personally. I just prefer the standard iron palette and I'm gonna stick with that. I'm not sure if I mentioned this so far, but the refresh rate on this is 25 Hertz, which again has become a pretty standard uh, number for these cameras. The lens on this camera is a fixed uh, focus model. Uh, the focal length is 4.3 millimeters with a minimum focus distance of 30 centimeters uh, for this Tor 002 model without the macro lens. Whereas something like the E2 Plus with its uh, adjustable focus lens is capable of focusing at different distances more easily. And there is also this digital zoom function available which can do 2x and 4x. It may be useful for zooming into some areas of the image given the larger size of the screen. In the user manual they also specifically mention the camera has 8 gigabytes of RAM. Not sure if they're doing that just to brag about it or why because I don't see how you can use that information. Yes, it does feel like it has some beefy processing happening inside with enough resources to handle anything. It's very snappy, I can confirm that. And I must say that the user interface on this particular uh, unit does feel the nicest I've seen so far. Uh, on a thermal camera they're using nice fonts nice graphics uh, it's very responsive it just looks nice and modern certainly a huge step up when compared to older models i previously reviewed the menu system is very intuitive and comprehensive it includes uh, nice useful options that were not previously available in thermal cameras in this price range Using the SD card storage, the camera is capable of capturing both images and videos, including time lapses. So a single press of the trigger will capture an image, a second press will save it. Uh, then a long press of the trigger will initialize the video recording and then again a short press stop and then with another short press you can save the video file. The camera also includes this interesting feature of uh, capturing audio notes. Uh, with your images and this type of feature can be incredibly useful because when I'm capturing multiple images I always struggled with keeping track of what exactly I was observing in, ima in the image. Well not anymore, now you have a microphone on the camera and you can use it to record audio notes with every image you take if you wish to do so. It can also capture video uh, with audio by doing the, the long press of the trigger as I mentioned earlier. However, upon checking how this audio functionality actually works, I must mention two very important things that I found. Number one, the microphone is very low gain, sounds very muffled, you practically have to scream into the microphone to barely hear anything. I reported this to Thermal Master, they've been very responsive, they confirmed the issue is present at their end too, and they're looking into a possible fix through a firmware update. And then there is the audio note feature. This does not produce individual audio files that you can access easily on the SD card. I think they're somehow embedded into the image files and only accessible through their Windows PC app. So that's a limitation if you plan to use that feature, although I'm sure that some smart people out there is going to build some sort of Python tool that is able to extract that audio information from the file. And speaking of image capture, there are two ways in which you can download images, either through the USB Type-C port uh, connected to a PC or through Wi-Fi and the mobile app. Uh, and of course, the third way would be to just remove the SD card. So via USB, the camera doesn't show up on my Mac OS computer, but it is showing up as a camera device on my Windows PC and I can easily access the internal storage all while the camera continues to function as normal. In order to connect through the mobile app, you first have to install this app called uh, Thermal Smart. It won't work with any of the other previously released apps from Thermal Master. Then you enable the Wi-Fi hotspot on the camera. You connect to this AP name with your phone and it will automatically show up in the app. And at this point, you can use the mobile app to capture new images or even access the internal storage ones and download them to your phone, for example, again, all while the camera continues to work on the built-in screen. There's also a Windows PC app which they offer for download from a Dropbox share. Uh, the app installed fine on my Windows 11 machine. It discovered the camera connected via USB uh, and then connecting to the, to, to the camera is done by going to the online analysis tab and double clicking the device named UVC camera. On some occasions it failed, it crashed the camera and sent it into a reboot, but most of the time it works. 
you can get a live view and various measurement points and you can do this for both online as in live view or offline as in importing previously captured images now before wrapping this up with a conclusion let me also show you a few other examples of things you can inspect with this camera here is for example an electrical panel in my office building uh, there's not a lot of current passing through this that's why uh, we don't see anything important here is for example the AC split unit on my wall and here's a close-up uh, view of that where the actual refrigerant comes in here is some LED panel lighting on my office ceiling you can clearly see the hotspots generated by the LEDs which are located on the sides of the square panel here is my desktop PC plus the NAS and a switch sitting on top of that case and here is a PCB and while I wouldn't recommend using such a camera without a micro lens for PCB inspection you can see it does a respectable job as long as the components are not too small now if I were to buy this handheld camera with a beautiful 3.5 inch IPS panel with 640 by 480 pixel resolution I would primarily intend to use it via the built-in LCD and potentially occasionally use it via the smartphone app or connecting to a PC just to download my captured media but if your main use would be you know connected to a computer using the provided analysis software then it should be noted that while it does work some bugs should be expected I also have to be fair to compare it with the E2 Plus because they're in a similar price bracket and I have to mention that while the Tor 002 uh, is better for handheld usage due to its high quality bigger LCD screen the manual focus function which is available on the E2 Plus will give you a more clear image for a variety of distances to target something which the Tor is not capable because of its fixed focus lens but the Tor is aimed uh, mostly at general purpose inspection uh, where your target is at more than half a meter distance where using its built-in LCD screen will do a better job than the smaller one on the E2 Plus also the important to note is the problem I identified regarding the low gain microphone which you can barely hear on recording so again if that is a feature that you must have for your use case then it's probably best to wait for an update from Thermal Master to see if they can fix it via a firmware upgrade however if these things are not a limitation for your use case then this is probably the best camera that the money can buy right now in this price range with these specs it's just very well built it's got the latest technology really nice user interface and already includes everything you would you could need like it comes with the um, 32 gigabytes SD card storage and I very much like the integrated uh, manual uh, protective shutter that we get on this unit I like the big nice and crisp LCD panel I like the super resolution feature which gives you more usable pixels for practically the same costs so with everything considered do yourself a favor use the coupon code and order one of these for general inspection purposes you won't regret it I will also be interested in hearing how you feel about everything shown here is there a better option on the market right now than this let me know in the comments below for now this becomes my number one go-to handheld thermal camera if I need to do some general purpose inspection right on the LCD screen Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next week.